Today I'm in the southern United States and I'm looking at St. Augustine grass. When I moved to the south about 16 or 17 years ago, I'd never seen a St. Augustine grass lawn before. And when I got down to the south, saw it for the first time, I thought it was the ugliest grass I'd ever seen because it's such a wide leaf blade. But as you see them, as you get used to them, uh, it really kind of grows on you. It's a really dense lawn, it's a pretty lawn. The stolen that I'm holding here is about three feet long. And so you can see why it forms such a dense lawn. These are extremely uh, vigorous stolons. A couple of things for identification characteristics. The arrangement on the shoots for the stems, i.e. stolons, are opposite. So you've got one shoot that, that comes off the stolon on one side of the node, and you've got one on the other side. So at every node, there are two new shoots coming off the stolen. So that's a good thing to look for. Centipede grass and carpet grass are alternate. So if you're confused between identification of St. Augustine grass and carpet grass or centipede grass, look for opposite versus alternate. A couple other interesting things. It's a compressed stem, so it's flat. And so you can see when I turn this sideways how flat it is. And so when something is that compressed, the vernation or that new leaf that's coming right out the middle of the plant at the top has to be folded and this one obviously is folded it's obviously folded in half like a book there's no way that can be rolled up so folded vernation another interesting thing is you can see where the mature leaves fold away from the stem there's a little pinched area there so you can see that it's off color it's a kind of a cream color before the leaf comes away from the stem it gets a little pinch in and so that's a good identification character. It's not really much of a legula, you really can't see uh, a whole lot on there. So as I pull that leaf away from the stem, uh, you can see that there's a little bit of hair that's evident uh, on that ligule. With the, the right amount of fertility, uh, you can have a nice thick lawn. Uh, this one that I'm looking at today is decent, uh, probably hasn't been fertilized a whole lot. Uh, and so it's, this has some thin spots and some weeds in it, but uh, uh, you can get this uh, grass to, to thicken up and look great with some effort. The St. Augustine grass seed head is a thick spike. It doesn't occur in the lawn all that much, but the interesting thing is that this plant does not make any seed, so you cannot buy seed for St. Augustine grass. It must be planted through sod or sprigs or plugs. You'll only see it on lawns or, or general areas because the traffic tolerance is very poor for this grass. Uh, it recovers well because it has large stolons, but uh, it doesn't take any sort of a beating whatsoever, and so you'll never see it on golf courses or athletic fields. It uh, requires irrigation, whereas Bermuda grass and zoysia grass won't need as much. It has issues with disease and insects uh, that Bermuda grass and zoysia grass don't have as many issues with. Uh, and so it's not a low input grass by any means. Another issue with it is that it has very poor cold tolerance. And so you're only gonna see this in the deep south. You'll see some other areas in uh, West Texas where you, you'll be pockets of it, a little bit in California, uh, a little bit across the Southwest, but this is really a Gulf state grass only. Uh, even into Tennessee, there's very, very little of this grass uh, and it peters out uh, on the East Coast once you get into Virginia, just because the cold tolerance of the grass is so poor. So because of the issues with St. Augustine grass, uh, with diseases and insects and irrigation and fertilizer. If you're looking for a low input southern lawn, centipede grass is a much better option. If you're in the deep south and you've got some shade issues, St. Augustine grass is a really good choice for your home lawn.